A half century ago, the United States and Japan were at war and nearing the destructive climax of World War II in the Pacific. Today, both sides mark the anniversary of one epic battle on the island of Okinawa. Correspondent James Hattori is there. It was one of the bloodiest battlegrounds of World War II, but 50 years after the fighting, Okinawa today is a place for healing and remembering. My company commander, Company G, 184th Infantry. We're in a foxhole adjacent, and the, the artillery landed on him instead of me. Veterans from both sides and their families were drawn by today's unveiling of Okinawa's Peace Wall, segments bearing the names of 234,000 war dead, including Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, and 12,000 Americans. This is Alden Benson. Kagan Alexanian's friend is among them, an officer who fought off eight enemy soldiers despite being wounded to save Alexanian's life. This goes on my wall now. And old Alden Benson will always live in my heart. The wall also reflects a cultural loss suffered by the Okinawans, who before annexation by Japan had lived in peace. We have to sacrifice our lives for the country or for the emperor. Okinawa lost one third of its population during the three month battle. The Japanese, determined to stall an American invasion of their main islands, were ferocious fighters. Even when defeated, they told soldiers and civilians alike to kill themselves rather than surrender. For the Okinawans, this isn't so much a monument as it is a symbol of their collective grief and an emotional plea etched in black granite. The wall tells us never again, this man says, never again. <laughs> Gives us all pause. Stop war. Stop the war. An indelible message to a world full of conflict from an island now at peace. James Hattori, CBS News, Okinawa. <laughs> U.S. and Japanese veterans marking the 50th anniversary of World War II's battle for Okinawa gathered today at the site of the campaign's fiercest combat. James Satori now with a report on that. The Marines returned to Okinawa's Sugarloaf Hill today, but this time, 50 years later, it was to heal wounds. We lost 2,500 people here. I hope I never see it again or nobody has to go through what I went through. It was one of the bloodiest fights in the costly campaign for control of Okinawa Island. The Japanese, anticipating that an invasion of their main island was next, were ferocious defenders. In all, more than 200,000 died here, including 12,000 Americans. We, we came up across through the air, and we didn't get up here very far. Kendall Majors says the images are burned in his mind, the days of advancing and retreating, and all the carnage. And I looked back across here, and I could walk on our dead from that tank all the way to the base of this hill and never touch the ground. Each of the veterans has his own stories, his own reasons for returning to Okinawa, but there is a common sense of unfinished business, an uneasiness about having survived when so many others did not. Paul Eisen recalls 50 years ago as he dodged enemy fire in an Okinawan field known as Death Valley. A photographer happened to be there, producing one of the most inspiring images of the battle. An old Ernest Hoyer from Devonport, Iowa, he says, Hey, Ison, that guy took your picture you went past. I said, Well, I'll never live to see it. <laughs> Today, survivors from both sides found, if not an explanation for what happened, at least a renewed purpose. It's been 50 years since that living hell, this former commander says. Now we've come together with the souls of the fallen to show the way for peace. James Hattori, CBS News, Okinawa.